Hey everybody, welcome to the uh, latest using Emacs. And today what we're gonna actually cover is Magit. All right, so this has been one of the big requests. A lot of people have been like telling me that I should gotta do Magit, I should do it, it should be the next video. And I've never done it, um, and I haven't done it for a couple of reasons. One is um, I'm not an expert at it. I, I just kind of muddle my way through. Um, another reason is there are some really, really good Magit um, resources out there already, some really good videos. So I didn't really know that I was adding anything to the puzzle. Um, but a couple of things, and the third thing is I use Magit on and off. Um, I also use the command line a lot. and. Um, so since I don't really, or I haven't used it 100%, I, I didn't think that I was the best person to make a video. So so what changed? Well, one, you guys all wore me down out there. You said, do me good. Um, second thing is um, Jonas Bernoulli put together that Kickstarter, which I, I certainly backed because even though I was using it on and off, um, I, I still definitely support it. Um, and... Um, Recently, basically, I'm based on one of the resources here on the homepage. It got me thinking about Magit differently, and um, what that made me realize is, even though there's some great resources out there, maybe somebody would uh, see it better. You know, like maybe my video works for one person, and someone else's video works for someone else, and you know, why not add another piece of the puzzle? Um, so, so the first thing I realized is Magit is not a Git interface. Um, it says right here, Git is an interface to uh, the control system Git. No, it is not an interface. Um, it is a Git control center which has an interface to Git. Um, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a little bit. Um, but looking at it that way has made me look at it very differently. Um, and so I love it now, and now my feelings are if you do development with Git, you've got to use Magit. Um, if you are not using Emacs, bring up Emacs, install Magit, and just use Magit on the side. Uh, if you're not a programmer, if you're not a software developer, become one so you can use Magit, okay? It's that awesome. Um, and what made me feel like this is um, if you go to the Magit homepage, you know, it's got these references like it's got, you know, a reference card, it's got the manual and all that. But if you look here under screenshots, um, this is a walkthrough. Um, basically, it's a walkthrough of Magit, uh, a visual walkthrough of everything. And this made me think about it differently. And I don't know why, because there's nothing here that I haven't seen before, but somehow or other, it clicked for me. So, so let's jump in and take a look. So to start with, you need to have a, a, a somewhere that we're going to work. So I'm going to make a directory called Z, and I'll go into it. And in the old days, I would have git init to create this as a git repository. But I'm not going to do that, because now I don't even have to do that. I can just go into Emacs here, and let's just go to tempzhello.py, this is for a Python file, what the hell. Um, and I can do uh, print, this is my program, save it. And I can try to control XG, which is to bring up the git status. And it says, where's my git repository down there? Right over here, where is it? Um, that's my directory. Create a repo in it. Yes, I now have a Magit directory. So I am now in business. Let me font it a little bit bigger, and I hope it's not. I'm just going to play a little window moving here just because I want to have as much real estate as possible. Make it a little bit more even. All right, so, so now it says, now first off, this is a section. And there's nothing really going on because there's nothing in my repo yet. But I can hit tab, and it opens and closes sections. And this tells me it's, it's a control center because, or command center, because it just gives me git status. And what I actually, I'll show you what I actually have started to do in a, in a little bit. But if I don't remember what to do, I can always hit question mark. And that gives me this nice pop-up. And so typically, I'm going to want to stage something, so that's S, or I'm going to want to commit something, which is C. So in this case, I want to stage that file. Now, if I don't remember what to do, oh, C for commit, so C. And then I just want to do a regular commit, so C, so just CC. It brings up this little buffer to type in the edit. Notice up here it's giving me my diff. And so I'll make initial commit. 
Control C, Control C, and it's done. I am on your know, master branch, blah, blah, blah. So let's say we put in some more stuff. Let's put in a little function here. And let's uh, make our greeter function, and it'll return hello world. So we've done that. If I go here and I type G to update my status, notice I have this section, and I have this section. Um, I modified hello, and I have here recent commit. I can um, I can hit D. Actually, I don't know what, if that's what I D D for. Um, that's going to be looking at changes. I don't have this. That's not what I wanted to do. So let's come over to here. Let's um, hit enter on this. And it brings up this information about this commit, including the, the diff, all this other good stuff. That's what I wanted to do. If I'm here, I can hit tab, and it opens up the diff here. Um, I can hit tab and close it. Let's say I want to commit this. So let's S for stage it. CC for commit, commit like before. C for the commit menu, and then C to go into commit. Uh, added greeter function, control C, control C, and I'm done. So now I have a couple of recent commits. So let's go over here, let's go into utils.py, and I'll say here, this will be um, def add, return A plus B. So I've done that. And now notice that I have, I'm hitting G just to update the screen. I have one untracked file. Let's go to here, let's go to um, hello.py, and let's import utils. And now notice I've got unstaged changes and an untracked file. I can open and close these, so if you have a lot going on, you can make it simpler. Um, I can close the commits if I want. Let's say I want to, let's go over here, and let's say down here, I also am gonna say, why don't we say um, result equals add utils.add 2 and 3. So now if I come over here to this, I can look here. I've got import utils up here, and I've got utils.add down here. Now if I want to stage this whole thing, I can just come over here and type S to stage. And I also, if you look at the help here, I can do capital S to stage everything. But you will unstage things. So I could just hit an S here or an S here just to stage one of those hunks, but I usually don't use to do that. Um, so I'm just going to stage all of that. Let's stage this file. Let's commit it. I added utils and used it. I don't know. And so now we've got all these going on. So I can look at these. I can hit enter here to look at that one, etc. So this actually, you know, you can start to see as you get your, as your program builds, you get um, everything becomes a little bit more, um, you know, you get more information down here. Let's say we can get more information. Let's go over here, bring up the question mark. You don't have to bring it up. You just hit the key, but I can look at L for log or capital L for chain. Let's look at chain logs. Um, capital L, I don't know, um, for the buffer. I actually haven't used this. I would normally do L and then log current, and I here see my logs. I can hit enter on this. I can see information on that commit. Enter on this, see information on that commit, etc. I can also do things like, let's say, L, and I can, let's no, not show the graph, show it in color, or uh, let's show the diffs. So now notice that now when I'm looking at this log, it has the diffs embedded. Uh, so let's L, let's uh, not show the diffs. So you can just turn these on and off really easily. So there's a lot of good stuff going here. So let's say we're using Git, uh, but let's say I want to use something like GitHub. So I'm just going to go to GitHub over here, and I'm going to make a new repository. And I'm going to call it Z. I'm not going to put anything in it. Create the repo. And um, I don't know if you can actually do this from the Git. It would be cool if you did. I think you have to go up to GitHub and actually create this. Um, if I'm wrong, terrific. But I'm going to push an existing repo from the command line. So let's open my terminal. I'm in here. I'll paste that code. And so now I don't actually need this window anymore. Now I've got this going on here. So now if I want to do stuff here, why don't we say print r and let's this is that's in the main routine hello.py so I don't have my print r here but if I come here and I I don't have to see that let's say I stage that and I do that commit um, add it a line now if I want to push this up I can use the push menu which is somewhere capital P so it's capital P and then it's just regular push remote um, I want to push the origin. 
Now that should be done. Let's bring this up here. Let's reload the page. Bang, print R. So we've got this really nice connection between my local and my remote all from within the Git. So, and again, notice that we're seeing more and more interesting stuff here just, you know, as, just as we were. So let's look at that menu again. We can, you know, open and close all this stuff. Let's talk about branches a little bit. So if we want branches, that's the B menu. And we're going to create a new branch. Um, so let's do, let's, I don't know if C does both. Let's check out a new branch. Uh, the new branch is going to start at master. We'll call this dev. Okay. And so now we should be in dev. So let's, uh, let's say this is in dev. And let's branch check out, whoops, didn't want to do that. Control G, branch, check out master. What's well, modified but not stage. Uh, so let's uh, let's um, branch check out dev. Let's commit this to dev. Um, so stage commit commit add it to dev. Bang. And so that's that. So let's do a branch branch to master. And now notice that's gone because now we're in the master branch. But if I want to come here and I go branch, branch to dev, and we're back. So now let's say we want to move this to GitHub. We can do that capital P again, and we can push to remote, and let's see what we got here. We're in master. Hello.py doesn't have this is in the dev branch, but we do have a dev branch here. And now this is in the dev branch. So it really just everything links together really, really nicely here. Um, so, um, so let's say, I don't know if I showed this yet. Um, I actually really don't remember. Let's say we stay in the dev branch and let's change this. And let's say, and we added this up at GitHub. You know, added at GitHub. So let's commit these changes. Let's come over to here. And let's go to that help menu again. And we can, if we want, pull. So F is pulling. So let's go F. Um, we're going to pull origin dev, because that's the branch we're in. And added this up at GitHub, as you can see here. I've got some sun glaring in on my screen, so it's hard for me to see it here. Um, but that's really cool. All this is really, really awesome. We can now look at our logs again. Now our logs are a little bit more complex. Let's look at our logs. Let's turn off the diffs. Look at them again. So we, all of this information, um, which is really, really sweet. So let me just show you one other thing with this, which I really like. Let me just go to another project. Let me just get rid of everything here. And let me go to CP project. And I've been playing with closure script here. And um, so it's a more complex um, project. So let's do control XG. And what I actually have been doing most recently is, and you know, the windows aren't the right size. But what I'll do is I'll have my development window and I have a second monitor that I'm not recording. And on that second monitor, I'll just have this frame here with me Git. And I've got all of these unstaged changes here. I don't even, you know, and so what I could do is I could commit all of these. So and it doesn't matter. I could just see what they are here and, uh, you know, uh, made, made a whole bunch of changes. So let's, um, let me revert this file. Uh, so let's stage all of these. And um, if I look at the log here, notice that I've got different, I've got a reagent branch, I've got a dev branch. If I look at the log, it's, um, you know, there's more things going on here. Um, but let me just stage all of these. And, um, you know, uh, basically reagent is working. This is a little project, closure, closure strip, reagent is really cool. Let's say I've got this guy here. It's an untracked file I don't want to deal with. What I could do is I could go into my git ignore, but another nice little feature, if I just type in I, I can be bang, that's now my git ignore file. So let's uh, let's stage that. Uh, let's commit that and change git ignore. 
So I can actually just, you know, just deal with those Git ignore in there. And so that's actually pretty cool. Um, I'm just going to push these up to, um, you know, uh, which, you know, whatever. Um, but I want to show one other last thing here. This is in the branch reagent. So if I go to um, some file, well, I don't know. Um, let's see if I'm here and if I go to, well, let's see if this changes. Let me just go change the branch. I want to check out dev. Yeah, and so you can see that change there. So dev and reagent are different. And let's say I want to merge these together. So I can now do a merge. And so merging I can do with n. Now I'm in the dev branch. So I can do a merge. And uh, the new version of the Git has like, like all sorts of new merge features. Like you can, I think, merge and get rid of a branch or whatever. But I'm just going to do a regular merge. And I want to merge from reagent into here. Um, and I think that. Well, I could unmerge it, um, but that's pretty much it. So if we look at this here, and then we do a branch checkout reagent, nothing seems to change there. Branch checkout dev, nothing seems to change there. So just that easy, we're able to do the merge. So there's some really, really, really cool things going on here. Now there's one thing that I haven't showed you here. Like I think if we look, uh, and there are a couple of things here. Like like I've got a bunch of branches, and I had some merging going on here, but I don't see any of that cool. You know that like if I go to bring up a terminal and I go, um, whoops, uh, wrong piece. Uh, you know, like, like I don't see the the graph here, you know, even though it's straight down here, um, you know, I'm not seeing that here, and I'm not sure what's up with that, but whatever. I mean, I'm not, you know, it's not a big deal. I'll figure it out at some point. Um, the other thing that I haven't shown, if I bring up the help, there's a lot else doing here. Um, you know, you could, uh, let's, you know, diff, uh, diff, do what I mean, and, you know, oh, well, that's here, so for this particular one, uh, that brings up the diff. Um, reverting, uh, well, I showed you for branches checking out, which also goes to the previous version. You can unstage, lots of stuff to play with. The one thing I didn't show are e-diffs or dealing with merge conflicts. Um, and that doesn't come up that often for me because I'm usually not developing at multiple places and it's usually me. Um, so I haven't had that with Megit um, really since I started using it mostly full time. So maybe I'll make another video after that comes up and figure that out. But, but again, this is really cool. And they, again, just looking at this, um, you know, that's the log, but so much information here. You know, um, if I make some change, like I can look at all of these. It, it's really, really, really cool and efficient. Um, it themes nicely. You got to start using it if you don't. Um, Emacs is really two killer apps as far as I'm concerned. Well, well maybe three. Um, but org mode, um, Megit. Uh, I'm also really enjoying Cider for closure stuff, but I'm really a newbie in closure. So, um, but that's a really nice environment. So I hope everybody enjoyed this. And um, yeah, and that's it for today. So yeah, go Megit. If there's another Kickstarter, I will gladly contribute to it.